Welcome to Season 3 of E-Commerce Fast Lane, Episode 88. Welcome to E-Commerce Fast Lane, the podcast show to help you build, launch, grow, and scale a wildly successful e-commerce company. Listen to real conversations with proven practical strategies and success stories. Learn how to generate more traffic, more sales, more profit, and customer lifetime value for your Shopify store. And now, your host and e-commerce entrepreneur, Steve Hyde. This episode is brought to you by OmniSend, makers of sophisticated omni-channel marketing automation tools for sales-driven Shopify brands and marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, web push notifications, Facebook Messenger, and retargeting ads on Google and Facebook. So it's much more than just email marketing. They handle all of your marketing activities across multiple channels, all from within one platform. They have single-click Shopify integration, which also includes email templates and automatic product import from Shopify. Super easy migration from any other email solution that you might be currently using. And right now, OmniSend is offering a 14-day free trial for all of my listeners, which also includes 50% off for the first three months. So check them out, ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Omnisend and use the coupon code Fastlane when you sign up. Hey there, it's Steve and welcome back to the e-commerce Fastlane podcast. Now, if this is your first time listening, this is an e-commerce show where we have honest and transparent conversations about building and thriving with your store powered by Shopify or Shopify Plus. Now, new episodes are available each week with your favorite podcast player through iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and Spotify. Or you can also sign up online at ecommercefastlane.com and be notified when a new show is being released. My guest on today's episode is Yehav Hartman, who's the CEO of Magix, and they are becoming a market leader in the field of paid advertising and this omni-channel ad optimization. And they're providing an all-in-one Facebook and very soon Google ad platform. And they're currently managing over $85 million in ad spend. So it's a compelling solution that is being leveraged right now by many Shopify brands to help drive more awareness and consideration for their brands, which is now helping with conversions. So it's very interesting. I'm so glad you're here. Let's jump in and learn more. Hi, you have, and welcome to e-commerce Fastlane. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. I mentioned at the top of the show a bit about what Magix does, but on a high level, can you share what sort of problem that your software and solution is solving for Shopify store owners? Magix is basically an uh, all-in-one platform for ad optimization, uh, omni and cross-channel. So it basically provides all the marketing and advertising technologies that a Shopify merchant or any other store or business owner would need in order to achieve success with his Facebook ads and soon Google. That's excellent. So it's basically uh, those instead of going into the Facebook ads manager and kind of doing things manually or other different types of apps that are floating around trying to help people out. You've created a platform now that really helps people think about the whole life cycle of your potential customer and it helps optimize those ads in exchange for better performance than maybe what you could do manually. Exactly. We're really all about helping our clients uh, grow their their business and optimize their ad spend uh, in a very easy to manage and profitable way. We basically sit on top of Facebook ads and also Google now, and we optimize your budget. We do all of those things that uh, normally an agency would do or a professional ad buyer would do. This is basically what Magix is all about, and that's that's our value. So let's talk about your journey. I understand you're a co-founder. And so let's talk about what would you say uniquely positions you and the founding team, I guess, number one, to have the desire and number two, to have the expertise to want to create this platform. I worked for an email marketing company for a long time. I saw I'm already in the MarTech space for over seven years. And while working with the brands, just like you, um, uh, Steve are doing it with Shopify Plus, I noticed how much, even though they're paying a lot to, let's say, to Shopify or to Emasis, the company I worked for back then, I saw the amount of spend and, and money that is actually spent on online advertising 
And this was really interesting for me to get to know this industry better, to understand how it works on the back end and on the front end. So basically to figure this out. So already back then, uh, I started the audience onboarding solution integration into Google and Facebook and then managing this business unit and becoming the vice president of advertising products. But at some point, I felt like I really want to master the front end. So actually managing those clients budget myself as an agency. So I started an ad agency uh, called Rolls Royce Media where we've been managing something around one to $2 million a month on ad spend across something like six, seven, eight clients, really doing high level ad buying uh, for only for la large brands, only spenders doing hundred K a month. The agency was actually growing really fast. And I noticed that we can't really scale the agency. And I noticed that all of the work that we've been doing in the agency could be automated, could be done by software. In that point of time, my co-founder and myself, uh, we, we started uh, Dan Becker. We started the uh, Magics, which then became kind of like my main business, which today we already have uh, thousands of users. And as you said, we're managing actually by now around $100 million a month in Facebook advertising spend and, and soon Google. That's really exciting. So and one thing I've noticed too a lot as I talk to lots of founders that are trying this top of funnel, this, this whole acquisition and conversion strategies is I feel like concepts of machine learning and artificial intelligence, it's a popular topic would almost say that it's kind of taking over the field of paid advertising in general. Can you share a little more details about in, from, from your perspective, tell us about this process, about this whole man versus machine and, and, and why Magix is uniquely positioning itself in the market. Magix is, is an AI company, and I know this word is used a lot of times, uh, but in, in our case, we actually really use a lot of AI components across different solutions and products and areas of our platform. So we are already leveraging an AI today. But if you break down AI, it really, from my perspective, AI is any process that actually replaces a work that usually uh, was done by a human. So that's kind of how I see the integration between the human and machine. So the more things that could be either automated, optimized, or completely managed by a machine, because it's done more effectively compared to a human just managing it by himself, doing the manual work, putting the time, putting the hours on, on getting those things done. So that's kind of the state of uh, the man versus machine where we are today. And while we're not a complete autonomous AI platform today, this is actually our vision and every month, every product release, everything we do is in the goal of how can we help advertisers do their work better? How can we save them time? How can we help them improve performance by utilizing the machine and the algorithms and the AI modules and everything that is involved? That's interesting. So who can actually benefit from using magics, because I, th I feel that a lot of tools have, I would call almost a sweet spot of the type of merchant that could get the most value out of it. Can you share how you believe the product is positioned in the market? Yeah. So initially, since we, we, everything started from the ad agency, right? We were doing like large spenders, really big clients. So initially the knowledge and everything we, uh, the knowledge and the tactics and the strategy that we used and I personally knew, which then I injected into the software were based on larger spenders. So the software was designed for people doing 50K, 100K, 150, 200K a month at minimum with Facebook ad spend. That's how kind of we were thinking about the solution, about the different areas. But at some point, it turned out that actually also smaller advertisers are seeing a tremendous value with our product and are actually also achieving success. So I, I kind of, to that, I really believe that those principles and business logic that is being used by the big spenders also applies to the smaller ones. And this is actually something that surprised us. From that point of time, we, that we realized this, we just reduced our uh, entry level of the pricing so that we can support also smaller merchants. So anyone spending $200, $300 a month today can already see great value from, from the platform. But we also have spenders doing $15 million a month, large ad agencies, $12 million individual advertisers do, doing a few million a, a month in ad spend. That's so interesting. It's great that typically the sweet spot is kind of in the mid-market for most of these sort of tools, but I guess having the AI component built into it and, you know, mentioned about the whole man versus machine part, I think about the word efficiency. So it sounds like you've learned a lot at the former agency through Amarsis and through, you know, just through that email solution. And then on your own managing through an agency, you've learned a lot from managing large amounts of money for other brands and then, and then putting that, almost that brain power and insights 
into a piece of software now to really help the small and mid-sized people. And then, you know, once they start seeing the benefits of that, they're going to continue using your platform because the value is there on a small scale and just continues to flow, you know, up into the right for them, you know, thanks to, you know, your solution. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Magic Today is already kind of like the secret weapon of thousands of advertisers. And I, we really had like a few affiliates. They didn't even want to, like they started as affiliates of Magic's. And at some point they told us, hey guys, we, we can't advertise your software anymore. It's too powerful to put this, basically this power into the, the hands of our audience. <laughs> yeah. Really, we had, we had like, <laughs> you know, because we're, we're marketing to advertisers. Every advertiser, and they wouldn't like m- many of them wouldn't just go and head and buy a product. They're always thinking like, "Hmm, how can I sign up as an affiliate deal?" That was funny because a lot of people were asking us, but then a lot of people decided not to do it at the end, which kind of just motivated us more, kind of to put the word out there and to grow. That's so interesting. So let's talk about the whole Facebook advertiser. I mean, it seems depending on the maturity of the brand, you, you know, there might be someone that's part of the acquisition or conversion side of the brand, and so they're working on paid ads and they're trying to drive this awareness and consideration. And that's what Facebook really does. It really helps drive net new visitors to a site. And then there's other variables for on-page conversion and things that need to be looked into. So let's divide Facebook up a bit because I think there's quite a few tactics and strategies that I think people need to think about. And I'm hoping we unpack some of those because you obviously have very deep knowledge from your past and now through the software. Let's dig into some of these strategies and tactics that you see today people need to consider. First of all, like I said in the beginning, Magix provides, again, all the advertising technologies that the advertisers need. And even if you break down our client base, we have agencies and large agencies, smaller agencies, uh, solopreneurs that are running ads for businesses. We then have enterprise clients and, you know, like media buying teams, performance marketers, advertisers, marketers. Also, the agencies are using white label features. So at the end, we have a bunch of personas for all of them. At the end of the day, if you're an agency, you just need to improve your client's performance results. If you're a small marketer, you just want to grow your business. If you're a big marketer, you focus on being profitable and scale. So basically, if you look at the Facebook advertising world, uh, we have clients from the agency space and agency clients using us where their goal is just to improve their client's business results. And then you have larger advertisers, if it's the ad team, performance marketing teams, uh, social marketers. But it doesn't matter who is the persona or who is the person that is actually running the ads. At the end of the day, you have the ad account and you need to master performance within the ad account and within Facebook environment. So If I'd have to really classify all of those areas that you need to master, you can divide it into seven different areas. We have automation tactics. So being able to put stop loss rules and surfing, which means that if you have a good day, you increase the budgets more because there's a lot of seasonality. So you you don't want just have to have a constant budget running. If you have a good day, you want to spend more. In bad days, you want to spend a bit less. Many advertisers see this trend that when the day starts not so good, it's very likely to continue with bad performances. But when the day early on is very good, you know that the performance continues with this positive trend. So those automation tactics are really powerful. The second point is that you want to make sure that you have a 360 audience coverage. You want to make sure you're not forgetting any audience across all the funnel stages from prospecting to remarketing to retargeting and retention. Even inside prospecting, you have a lot of different audiences that you want to test. You want to test lookalikes and you want to test interest targeting and you want to do lookalike intersection with interest and you want to run with broad audiences and you want to run with smaller audiences. You want to test 20% lookalike, 10%, 5%. And there's a lot of settings and a lot of tweaks. So advertisers really need to know which audience clusters to test and make sure they're putting them all out there and to give them a fair chance. So that's basically the audience coverage. Then you have budget optimization, as a third point, you have bidding optimization, putting the budgets in the right place, both of those areas. And once things go good, you have the audiences, you have automation tactics in place, you have the right bits and, and the budgets and everything is working. You want to scale. That's what every Facebook advertiser, every brand owner wants. They want to make it profitable, the machine, and then scale it. So there's a lot of different scaling strategies. And this is also an area that you need to master as a Facebook advertiser. Then another huge area that is very important today is creative. Also in Magix, we put a lot of focus on creative intelligence and AI of creative AI and understanding which creative actually drives performance. You want to make sure you're using all the creative formats and, and that you kind of can brief your designer for, for how to create the next best ad according to your data in your account. 
The next area would be the, the next best moves. What should I test? Which audience should I launch? Which campaign should I launch? So this is also an area that uh, you need to have a system working for you. And there's also like, those are the, the main seven areas, but at the end, there's also other things that are complementary to the Facebook advertising success. For example, um, you need to own the comment section. You know that the first comment is yours, that you're getting likes. If you're getting uh, people that are not happy with your products or services, maybe you can unsubscribe them by yourself, either from an email list that you upload or by using an unsubscribe link like we do in Magix uh, to keep the, let's say, the haters away. And let and, and you should unsubscribe the, those people instead of them reporting you to Facebook, which then uh, lowers your page score and affects your overall performance. So this is a very niche uh, area, but it's really uh, all of those things really affect performance. And all of those areas actually have point solutions. So today, if you're an advertiser, you need to go and get a solution for bid testing, a solution for split testing, a solution for automation. And each one of those areas that I mentioned, there's suppliers and there's providers. And there's tech partners trying to figure it out. But at the end, you need this Swiss, Swiss knife. And to really be a full stack Facebook advertiser is someone that knows to master all of those areas. And that's what Magix is doing then, you know, based on these seven areas, we should kind of recap them. So automation tactics, getting this 360 degree kind of audience view to your budget optimization, bidding optimization, scaling strategies. I think I love that one. I love the creative insights and the intelligence and creative uh, formats and things that uh, could be passed on to the designer of things that are working well. And I love the next best move. I think that's interesting. What should I launch next? Not just keeping it the same, but maybe there's market intelligence through the tool to know what's the next best move. And I love owning the comment section too. I think you're right. Um, you know, you have to be the first person commenting and then you have to monitor that. And I think that's a very interesting way of looking at it. As you were talking, it made me think a lot. This show typically has, you know, Shopify entrepreneurs on it. So they have brands, they're store owners, they could be part of the marketing team. But I also think there are some people that are in the SaaS market too. So they're selling a piece of software, you know, business to business like you are. I'm curious is that how is Magix growing their own business? Like, are you eating your own dog food, so to speak? Like, are you using your own tool to grow your own business? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, we, we're a SaaS company, but we operate just like an e-commerce store. So I think it's relevant both for the SaaS, listen, the SaaS owners, listeners, and also to the Shopify merchants. Because in our case, we, in terms of the Facebook advertising setup for scaling and the infrastructure, it's exactly like an e-com shop. We, have, we just have a few other events, but at the end of the day, we still have the final stages, prospecting, re-engagement, retargeting, retention that I mentioned before. And we even optimize for return on ad spend. So we actually, Facebook is our biggest growth channel as of today. And we run Magix ads using Magix software. Yeah, someone told me, don't say that you're eating your own dog food because it's uh, better than dog food. So I said that we're drinking our own champagne. Yeah, I can see that. And that's excellent. And that's obviously your ads are working because that's how I likely was able to find you somewhere through Facebook. And so it's so interesting that you're able to target through lookalike and through interest and things like that. And somehow I came across your solution and then started digging a little deeper over the last few months. Well, like a few of our competitors, they also signed up for Magix and they're like, one of them was like shocked from the performance he got with the tool. So yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. Kudos to you guys. So Let's talk about the people that are listening to the show, because like I said, typically it's mostly e-commerce entrepreneurs, but there's some SaaS uh, founders and stuff that listen in. But because there's a diverse range of listeners and you have so many Shopify brands that are using your solution, could you offer any advice today, those that are maybe in the early stage of their journey? Typically, it's a side hustle. They probably still have a regular day job. It's not VC fund. It's just early stage. They're trying to get some product market fit. They're selling on Shopify. They're happy. Do you have any advice of what sort of things you think they should be working on if they're early stage? Yeah, for those solopreneurs, they really, first of all, need to understand like who they are as a person, because at the end of the day, if you're a one person business, the business is, is you. So you first of all, really need to understand who you are as a person, what you're good at. So are you like more uh, operative person? Are you a marketing guy? Are you a product guy? For example, I'm a product guy and a marketing guy, but I'm not a tech guy. So my co-founder is a tech guy. So I need to put next to me people that can complete my set of skills and capabilities. So you really need to understand who you are, surround yourself with either partners or people that could complement your skills. And then from there, this will already help you to jumpstart your business much faster. Basically, the next step, once you figure out this one, you need to figure out the business. And when you figure out your, your business growth, you really need to understand 
where you are as a business? Are you in the early growth stage? Are you growing? Is your advertising yet profitable on the conversion? Is it profitable on a lifetime value perspective? So for example, one of our clients in our agency has invested hundreds of thousands of dollars into his business, but he was not profitable. He couldn't make Facebook profitable. He didn't get any traction. Once we started working on his business back then in the agency, four and a half months, we managed to scale him from zero to $150,000 a month in revenue. The business valuation grew from, you know, something like everything you invested, most probably like 200K to something like seven, eight million in such a short time frame. So you really need to understand how can you put your business to the next level? It, in many, many cases, it comes down to your uh, advertising performance because today advertising is, is the driver force of everything. If I had to give a few tips about how to get this right, so early on, if you don't even have an ad account or you didn't start to advertise, you really want to start actually with an agency, someone that already has done your niche, someone that has experience in your specific niche and already had a lot of success stories and knows exactly what converts, how to build the ads, even from the funnel, like not just from the ad perspective, but the whole funnel. And once you reach this point of that your account has already been built, it can take one, two, three months, then it's time to scale, it's time to use softwares. And yeah, then you can either decide if to continue with the agency or just uh, let a software optimize it and, and run it. But it's early on, it's very important to have this expert knowledge come inside and, and help you like build something up. Yeah, I totally agree on the understanding what your superpower is. And you, you mentioned, you know, are you an operator or a marketer or growth? I think that's interesting to be able to take a step back and think about that first. And what do you do well, double down on those strengths and then outsource the rest or hire the rest and align yourself with other people. I think that's a really smart way of uh, building a company. Now, what about those that are, I guess I would consider them more in the mid market. So they might be on Shopify plus probably small team. They're kind of eager to grow and scale. What do you believe maybe the executive team or the marketing team, what should they be working on? The executive team should really focus on the brand and the product. The end comes down to increasing the customer lifetime value. So that's the heart of the business. That's your core offering. It's your product. This is where the founder in most cases should be. Then you have the marketers or the marketing or the CMO. Their goal is basically to improve the advertising efficiency, effectiveness, and operation, which comes down to improving your ROI or in the language of advertising, your ROAS, return on ad spend. That's the coin in advertising and marketing today. So what does the future look like for Magix? Can you share any North Star, any highlights for your roadmap? I mean, you mentioned that, that you are now involved with Google and Google ads now, but can you share about any kind of partner alignment or any kind of innovation of things that are happening in the rest of 2020? So by today, we kind of like uh, secured ourselves as a, as a rising star, as a growing uh, market leader in the space of uh, Facebook advertising as an all-in-one ad optimization platform. And we're moving more and more towards a, a solution that would be an autonomous ad buying machine. This means that the machine manages your budget in the most effective and the most efficient way. And now, not just only on Facebook, but we want to do this cross-channel and omni-channel. So omni means that it's not just one way, you know, like outbound publishing into two platforms at the same time. This is like more cross-channel, but omni-channel means that you can take your best Facebook creatives that work on specific targeting and, and for men and then use the exact same creatives on Google ads, for example, so that the data is also shared between the platform. And from an attribution perspective, it's managed in a holistic way, across channel and within each, each channel. The components that will be responsible for this are two components. We have a strategy budget optimization machine, which is basically an account level budget optimization. This is something that Facebook doesn't have today. They have a campaign level ad set optimization. So it's a very intelligent system that we are now working on that thinks and acts like a marketer and reacts in real time. And then we're building another technology that helps you to understand what is your next best audience, your next best move and launches things for you. So we'll reach a state where people just click a few buttons. It launched for them all the campaigns, all the ideas, all the testing, everything that you should be doing. Then there's another machine that optimizes all of your budgets across all of those assets. Then there's another machine on top of all of those that manages cross channel to make sure you're you're getting the most ROI cross-channel in a holistic way because today those channels work together. And actually today there's no one in the market that really knows how to work well with tech giants, like with a walled garden. 
Facebook and Google are World Garden and they have their own attribution rules and principles and it's very like tricky. But this is something that we're trying to crack in order to have this, uh, this machine. That's excellent. And any connections to uh, CRMs or ESPs? Yeah, we actually, um, last month, we just completed our Shopify integration. Uh, two weeks after we already, we got like an award of like a chosen app by the staff, which was pretty cool, got us a lot of traffic. Today, we're more focused on strengthening the core offer within the ad networks. So Facebook and Google, and maybe other channels will, will also come in the future. But for now, Google and Facebook are so big. They have such a large market share. I think the last statistic I looked at was something like 65% of all ad budgets on the internet go through them. That's what we're focused on. That's what I see too. Uh, when I have a chat with my merchants about that sort of uh, ad buying and they tend to put, it's definitely the elephant in the room with Facebook and Google, but they also are putting 10 to 15% kind of in, in other channels to be there. You just, they don't know until they test. And so I've been finding uh, some good traction on TikTok lately. Pinterest, believe it or not, is actually helping a lot of brands. And so it's fun how people are yeah. able to branch out and, and just try different things. But put the bulk of their eggs in, in the basket. And it sounds like magic is the one that's going to, is, is really helping a lot of brands do that and optimize everything in the full funnel. So that's really amazing. We are near the end of the show for today. I've just written so many notes here. I just thank you so kindly for coming on the show. Do you have any closing comments or any takeaways that you would like to leave with our listeners today? Yeah, I really, I'm talking with a lot of Shopify merchants, with a lot of merchants in general and business owners. And I feel like, Business owners shouldn't be spending so much time on trying to figure out marketing. So I, I really see too many people are just like optimizing their account instead of navigating their business. And it's really hurting people's businesses. That's also our vision here in Magix is just to free up more time for merchants to focus on, you know, things that basically that they could focus their time on things that machines can't do. And I really believe in this future of AI and machines and optimizing and building this commerce machine that you can just connect into your account and it will make a lot of profits for you. But till this day comes, marketers need to find a way to free up more time and basically really make sure they focus on, on their core business. Uh, like we said earlier on the lifetime value on the product, don't fall into just managing your Facebook ad account and optimizing the small things because then you get blind on the on the overall and the macro picture. So how can people learn more about the Magix app and platform? You can uh, simply go to magix.com. So it's M-A-D-G-I-C-X.com. Or you can sign up. There's a seven-day free trial. And Steve also managed to get you guys a free credit to your account for, mm -hmm. for new signups. Um, so there's a hundred dollars for, for new signups, right? Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I know we did chat offline just before recording. And so I'm going to redirect uh, ecommercefastlane.com forward slash magics. It's going to be in the show notes uh, as a link there. And that's going to redirect to that listener only promotion for today, hundred dollar credit um, on your account for access to the platform. I think it'll give you more than enough time to be able to see the power of the platform really almost free of charge and see what it can do, connect your Facebook account to it and uh, see what it reveals for you. And and it'll nudge you in the right direction about what you should be working on. You know, we talked about some of these tactics that are important, both from automation and budget and bidding and scaling. And there's lots of things to do. All of that is inside the tool. So thanks so much for offering that credit. that will give people the opportunity to really uh, give us a, a test run and a good spin and see what it can do. Well, once again, thank you, uh, you have for coming on the show today and, you know, sharing your obvious passion for wanting to help these brands uh, Shopify grow and scale. So have yourself an awesome day. Thank you, Steve. Thanks for having me. This episode was brought to you by OmniSend, makers of sophisticated omni-channel marketing automation tools for sales-driven Shopify brands that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, web push notifications, Facebook Messenger, and retargeting ads on Facebook and Google, all from one platform. Try OmniSend for free for 14 days. Check them out, ecommercefastlane.com forward slash Omnisend and use the coupon code Fastlane when you sign up. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'd like to thank you, a loyal listener of e-commerce Fastlane. It's my hope that this podcast is offering you a ton of value through growth strategies, tactics, and exclusive insider tips on the best Shopify apps and marketing platforms, all with my personal goal to help you build, launch, grow, and scale with Shopify. 
Thanks for investing some time today and listening to the show. I'm so proud and excited that you have a growth mindset and are a constant learner. I truly appreciate you and your entrepreneurial journey. Enjoy the rest of the week and keep thriving with Shopify.